Hey friends from Five Reasons, welcome back to our Marlins Report. Today we're going to be uh, bringing you guys live the first press conference by Kim NG as the GM of the Miami Marlins. We're just waiting for them to start their broadcast. She's already there, of course, at Marlins Park. She's going to be taking questions from uh, journalists all around uh, the planet, probably because she's making history today as the first woman as a GM in sports history here in the United States. So let's go with that. We're, we're checking here on the Marlins and seeing if uh, they're right now in the previews. So they're about to start over there and we're going to do that and, and share this uh, historic moment with you guys here on Five Reasons. So give me a second and we'll be starting here in a couple of minutes. We're waiting for them, as you guys can see in your screen right now. They are setting everything up, and the stream will begin really soon here on Five Reasons. Thank you for joining us again, and we're going to be joining you guys, of course, in a little bit uh, when we have everything going on from Marlins Park. All right, so give me a second, and here we go. They're about to start over there, so let's uh, wait a couple of minutes, and we know we're going to hear from Kim NG in her first press conference as the Miami Marlins general manager after the announcement that was made last week by Derek Jeter and the Italian uh, Marlins team. So we'll be back as soon as they have it here, and we're going to leave you with this in the meantime.
So all, hi to all of you that are getting here to the Five Reasons YouTube channel. We are about to start here in a couple of minutes. We're waiting for the Martins to start their uh, streaming with the first time. We're going to hear from Kim NG as the new, uh, new GM of the Miami Martins. So give us a second. We're waiting. They're about to start the press conference over there. And we'll be back to you guys in a little bit. All right. So here we go. Good morning. Great to be here. Thank you all for joining us at a virtual press conference. Uh, hopefully, everyone's healthy uh, during this COVID pandemic. And I look forward to seeing all of you in person once we get through this. It's a special day for the Miami Marlins and this organization as we welcome Kim Ang as our new general manager. Kim, couldn't be happier to have you here in Miami. I want to thank everybody who was part of the process that got Kim here. We are truly a fortunate organization to have someone with Kim's 30 years of experience of three major league teams in the past nine years at Major League Baseball. I can't think of anyone more qualified for the position than Kim. I'm particularly thankful we're getting to do this in Marlins Park, and we look forward to having all our fans back next year live and to continue the great responses we had during this past year and continued success and sustainable for many years to come. And Kim will be a critical part of that process. Once again, thank you. And I know you look forward to talking to Kim and to Derek to give you many facets of the entire hiring process. Thank you very much. Um, this morning, virtually, this morning, you know, it's, it's an exciting and special day for us here at the Miami Marlins organization as we officially announced the hiring of Kim Ang as our general manager. You know, when I first reached out to Kim, I, I think through our first couple conversations, it became evident to both of us that this was a perfect fit. And uh, we couldn't be more excited to have her experience, her leadership help lead us down our path to sustained success. So, Kim, welcome to the Marlins family. I know your husband Tony is here as well. Welcome. And we look forward. I know no one came to listen to me. So I'm not on you. Rick, uh, really appreciate that. Um, first off, I want to thank Bruce and Derek and the entire ownership group for this absolutely wonderful opportunity. Uh, it absolutely means the world to me. Uh, I also want to thank my past bosses, uh, Brian Cashman, Dan Evans, Paul DePodesta, Ned Coletti, and Joe Torrey. Um, each of them has had a hand in making me the executive that I've become. So thank you. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge my mother, who was absolutely relentless in her pursuit of me becoming successful in whatever it is, whatever it was I was uh, doing. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge my father while he's not with us. He definitely fostered my love of sports uh, and my family who's just been so encouraging every step of the way uh, to, to me. Uh, and last but not least, of course, um, I'd love to thank my husband in front of all of you, um, who's been my rock, and who is every bit a piece of the word partner. Um, he truly embodies that word. So the last 72 hours have been uh, extraordinary for me. Um, you know, this, this was announced at 11 o'clock on Friday, and I can't tell you how much it meant to me to see the outpouring of just pure joy for a lot of people. Um, you know, all the congratulatory messages that I received uh, were just, you know, they were awesome. There were, you know, well, the count is above well over a thousand now um, of emails and texts that I received over the last 72 hours. Uh, but after, you know, after receiving these, these congratulations, it really made me take a step back and realize just how many people I've had a meaningful intersection with over my career. 
um, and they come from all walks. Um, writers reached out, former players, current managers who used to, you know, we used to work together, um, scouts, coaches, front office executives. Uh, it was just unbelievable. And then as, as the day unfolded, um, you know, I was able to zoom out a little bit and realize just what was going on and just how much impact this was having, um, you know, over social media. Um, and it really became about me being able to share the moment with so many. Um, I was watching text threads between friends, um, family members, and, you know, again, they were posting social media posts in these threads, and I was getting to see really what the chatter was out there. And it made me realize that it really was a, a glimmer of hope and inspiration for so many, that if you work hard and you persevere and you're driven and you just keep going, that eventually your dream will come true. I got, I got calls from, got calls and text messages from guys that I've known over the years who were just so excited to tell their daughters and wives. And then I got voicemails um, from friends, from front office executives with tears, uh, just so happy that, you know, that I had broken through, but, but really I think more for the sport and more about what it meant for, for us and society. And I think, you know, the next part of it was reflecting on what it took to get here. And you know, as I mentioned, the, you know, the perseverance and the persistence. But I think something that should really not go unnoticed um, is really it was fearlessness. And the gentleman to my left, Derek, um, embodies that word, fearlessness. I was privileged and fortunate enough to watch Derek for four years every day get out on that field. And that was his approach to the game. He left it all out there every single day. Fearlessness out on that field. And now with this, we see it off the field. So Derek, thank you again. Um, you know, one of the things that in my research uh, of the Marlins organization, you know, I was perusing the media guide and I was looking at the staff pages and it struck me that there were just so many different types of people that, that currently work here. Um, you know, there's great female representation in the scouting department. Uh, as well as scouting, I'm sorry, as well as the um, analytics department, um, uh, as well as the medical department. Um, our COO is uh, Caroline O'Connor, uh, who runs this organization as well. And that was really striking to me. But, was, but what was more striking was just the amount of experience, the different perspectives, the different backgrounds that all of these people come from. And it's with that diversity of experience and background that we're looking to build a championship caliber club and here in that Miami. That was really striking to me. Was, and so what we need to do is we need to use all the information that we can get, all the information that we can gather, these people come and from. better decisions will come with that information. The information has become more precise, but you still can't ignore all the different perspectives that are needed. And so that's what we're going to try and do here in Miami. And lastly, you know, this, this ball club, we want to be a pillar of the community. Um, I've had the chance to talk to a number of senior leaders here at the Marlins in the last couple of weeks, 
And what was really striking was the cohesiveness of the group and that moving forward, um, it's not just about the baseball operation, but it's about the business operation and how we're going to do this hand in hand, working together uh, to really bring the Miami Marlins to the forefront of this community. So with that, I thank you and I am open to questions. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, everybody. We'll now open it up to questions. Please use the raise your hand function. And we'll start with Jordan McPherson. Please identify the organization you're with. Thank you. Uh, hi there, Kim. Uh, Jordan McPherson with the Miami Herald. Welcome. Congratulations. Uh, you mentioned the man to your left, uh, Derek, and the relationship you have with him. You've worked with him before. You've worked with Don Mattingly before. You've worked with a few other people in the organization. How much do you think that familiarity and already having relationships will be able to help with streamlining this process and helping make that, that first step into the organization maybe a little bit smoother? I think it'll make it very smooth. Um, yeah, you mentioned my relationship with, with Donnie uh, and Gary. Uh, I've known them for, I've known Gary for 20, 20 years, and I've known Donnie probably for the last eight to 10. Um, you know, Donnie will work very closely with in LA and, you know, it, I, the one thing I can tell you is that through all of my conversations over the last couple of weeks, they've all just felt incredibly comfortable. And I think that is a huge, huge factor in this. Um, I also know that, you know, in having a history with these guys, uh, there's not as much of a learning curve for me. So I think it's going to be a seamless transition and I just can't wait to get working. Joe Fasaro. Uh, yes, Kim, uh, congratulations and welcome. Uh, you, you noted the, the outpouring um, and the overwhelming amount of support you've received since Friday's announcement. Obviously on that list, of, you know, just to name a few, Sharon Robinson, Michelle Obama, Warren Moon, uh, those, um, I'm sure many, many more on, on social media have, have expressed, uh, you know, about this hiring. Does it really let us sink in that this is much more than just baseball that you are, you're dealing with right now as you step into this role? It absolutely does. Um, you know, I can tell you again, through those text threads, people were, uh, throwing up different posts and, and the idea that it has affected this many people, uh, is just extraordinary. I, I I thought it would be a big deal, but this is beyond my expectations, and I think beyond many people's expectations. But I think that really is um, just a testament to where we are. Uh, people are looking for hope. You know, people are looking for inspiration, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that this is a part of it. Jessica Blaylock. Hi, Kim. Jessica Blaylock here from Fox Sports Florida. Congratulations on making history, doing something no woman has ever done before. There are going to be so many girls who look at you and think to themselves, I can do anything. And I'm curious, who inspired you? Who made you feel like in life you were capable of anything and like some, something like this was possible? Two people. Um, as a child, I looked up to. Uh, Billie Jean King was one. Uh, it's a woman who fought for equality throughout her entire career and is still fighting to this day. Uh, and then the second was Martina Navratilova. Um, and she, for me, was somebody who really changed the women's game and how it was played. And she changed the idea of what it, what it looked like to be a female athlete. So those two were hugely, hugely influential in my life. Steve Wine. Steve Wine. Kim, uh, congratulations on the uh, uh, path that you have carved over the last 30 years. Uh, I'm with the Associated Press, by the way. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I, I want to ask you about, I will ask you to describe the resistance and the pushback that you've experienced in baseball as a woman, which makes this achievement all the more remarkable. And how has it changed over the past 30 years that you've been in the sport? Yeah, Steve, I'll say this. In terms of resistance and pushback, uh, I think I've been able to win people over fairly quickly. I think, the, you know, obviously the last 
maybe 10 years just in terms of interviewing for the general manager's job. Um, you know, it hasn't come to fruition until now. But, you know, prior to that, I can tell you that there was really not much pushback at all. Uh, so it's, you know, look, it's, it's a tribute to, you know, the idea that you just have to keep plowing through. That's, that's what this is, you know, and, and yeah, you're, you're defeating, you know, it's like what we tell the players, you can go down and you can mope and sulk for a few days, but that's it. Then you got to come back. And I think that's, you know, what I've been able to do. And yes, I've been defeated and deflated um, numerous times, but you always still, you always still keep hoping and again, plowing through. Craig Mish. Hi, Kim. Congratulations. This is Craig Mish with Sports Grid. Thank you for doing the interview. Appreciate Thanks, it. Um, I, as a follow up to Steve's question, I would wonder you mentioned the last 10 years of interviewing and, and not getting some of the positions that, that you interviewed for. Uh, during that time where you persevered through that, uh, was, were there people that you leaned on for advice during that time? And was there ever any you know, sort of self evaluation to say, why am I not getting these jobs? Thank you. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think you, you always have to come back and say, what, what could I have done better? You know, what happened? Um, and you try and learn. You try and learn from each interview. And hopefully you can come back stronger and better in the next one. Um, in terms of, you know, leaning on people, uh, you know, there were a couple people that I leaned on. Of course, my husband was there every step of the way. Um, but, you know, you need your friends. You need your family. Uh, it is, it is difficult going through that failure publicly. Um, but, you know, again, you just have to, you just have to put your nose to the grindstone and just keep going. Dave Hyde. Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, a few minutes. Congratulations. I'm with the Sun Sentinel in Fort Lauderdale. I'm just curious. Um, everybody's talking about the reaction to your hiring. Has there been any reactions, uh, two or three, that meant something to you? Maybe either people you knew or didn't know. Yep. Uh, one was uh, Billie Jean King, for obvious reasons. Uh, Michelle Obama, of course, was a big one, humongous one. Uh, one was a tweet from Josh Rowich, who I used to work with in the Dodgers organization. And his was meaningful because... Um, you know, it just showed me how much people have been hoping for this moment for me and for the sport for such a long time. Uh, and, you know, the, the gratitude that he had and, you know, just the sharing of the moment. So it was, uh, it was great. Friday was great. Daniel Avros. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, Kim, and welcome and congratulations as well, Daniel Alvarez from Alexa Vaz and IPC Networks. When you see the reaction from fathers and parents saying, now my, my girls are going to follow the morning, it's because of you, and they see an inspiration in you. What does that mean to you, and, and how great uh, you to see this, you know, the, the impact that you're having on, on so many kids, independently if they are uh, girls or, or boys and just what you're doing right now. Yeah, no, it, it's absolutely awesome. Um, you know, I'm not sure how many people told me they were now Marlins fans, uh, but it had to be at least 500 of them um, and, and, and their friends because they've known about me for so long. Uh, I was going to tell Derek we might want to stock up on some more hats. Um, but, you know, so many people have, have – uh, already put in orders, but you know, in terms of these little girls, um, it means the world to me and anybody who knows me knows that I have spent countless hours advocating for young girls, advocating for young women, uh, and really trying to help them advance their careers. Uh, that is something that is just so important to me. And so now having this high profile position, um, you know, where, where you're out in public more and, you know, girls can see it. I mean, there's an adage, you know, you can't be it if you can't see it. But I guess I would suggest to them now, now you can see it. 
And so I look forward to hearing all of their stories and, and um, you know, just how uh, inspired they are to now pursue a, a job in sports, a job in baseball, um, and to reach for the stars. Mike Cunha. Hey, Kim, congratulations and welcome to Miami. Mike Cunha from CBS for Miami. Hey, um, kind of curious, you know, quite clearly laid out how much of a trailblazer you are, but do you feel any pressure um, with this position now? So I, I best describe it this way. Um, when Derek told me I got the job, um, there was a 10,000 pound weight lifted off of this shoulder. And then after about half an hour later, I realized that it had just been transferred to this shoulder. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, I do feel quite a lot of responsibility. I have my entire career. Um, I know that, you know, I am quite visible and, you know, I think that that's always been a, a, a big thing for me is to just make my reputation as good as I can make it um, and let that carry me through. Uh, and, and that's even more important now, now that I have this position, um, you just have to, care. You ha you, you're, you're bearing the torch for so many, uh, and that is a, a big responsibility, but I, I take it on. Greg Cody. Kim, congratulations. Uh, I'm Greg Cody with the Miami Herald. Hi, Greg. Um, I wonder after your long climb of 30 years and after all the dues, you've paid, uh, was there ever a low point where you sort of resigned yourself, hey, maybe this isn't gonna happen, maybe I'm not gonna get that general manager's call? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um, you know, after so many times, I think, again, you know, you feel uh, deflated and you think maybe it's not gonna happen. You know, but the one thing I, I wanna make clear to people is that even if it didn't happen, even if it hadn't happened, I was never going to see my career as a failure. Um, I, I've had a tremendous career. Um, you know, worked for three major league organizations. I was assistant GM for two of the most storied professional franchises, uh, and I was never going to see it as a as a failure. Other people might have, but I wasn't going to. Um, you know, I I know what I had done. I know what I had accomplished, and I know the reputation that I had built over all that time. Uh, but again, you know, sometimes you get in the dumps and, and, you know, I think that's just human. You know, I, I think that's just, I mean, how could you not, how could you not? So, you know, but again, you pick yourself up and brush yourself off and you get right in there again. Tyler Kepner. Well, yeah. Hi, Kim. Uh, Tyler Kepner with New York Times. Congratulations. Hey, Tyler. Uh, yeah, I, I want to ask you, at what point in your career path did you think that this was going to be possible? Not that someone might give you a chance, but that you could do it. Like, when did you know, I can be a GM, I, I've got what it takes? I think that reality, um, that became a reality probably, probably when I went to the Dodgers. Um, so my first stint was with the Yankees. I was there for four years. Um, and obviously, New York is a is a is an intense place. It's an intense market. Um, when I went to LA and, you know, I got more knowledge and more learning under my belt is when I really felt like, okay, maybe this is a possibility, but it was during my time with, with LA. And that, you know, I was put into some, you know, situations again, that were not in my comfort zone. I was, you know, farm director for a year. I then took on more responsibility with, you know, pro scouting, and you know that's where I really sort of got my um, yeah I got I got my sea legs under me and really felt like it was a possibility. Thank you, Hannah Kaiser. Hi, Kim. Hannah Kaiser from Yahoo Sports. Uh, I'm going to take it back a little bit earlier than than Tyler did. I have a similar question. We've talked about sort of how much this means for baseball and society, but I'm curious how much this means to you. Do you, do you remember when you first had the dream of being a GM? Did it predate when you realized you could do it? Did you have like a specific, that's where I hope this career in baseball leads? Thought? You know, I, I never really had that aha moment. I think, you know, throughout my career, I have 
not looked at the end of the rainbow. It's always just been a step-by-step -step process. Um, I never got too far out ahead of myself. And it was really just about doing the best job I could at that time and hoping to advance my career. Um, so again, it wasn't, you know, there was not this carrot hanging out there that you know, I had to do this or, um, you know, this was what I was going after until I became an assistant GM. Maury? Hi, Kim. This is uh, Maury Brown with Forbes Sports. Uh, congratulations. Thanks, Maury. Um, you mentioned Eric Peter um, as, as someone that you've looked to that um, has given you some inspiration. But Danny Evans is somebody that obviously is a big um, figure in your life, given you the first intern job. And then you mentioned the Dodgers. Um, how much has Danny met and, and what kind of conversation did you have after getting the job? Uh, Danny is a, a very big figure in my career. Uh, like you mentioned, Danny gave me um, my first opportunity as an intern. I worked for him for six years with the White Sox, and he was the you know he was the guy that just showed me how incredibly thorough uh, you needed to be uh, to be at that level. And it was every day, and it was night, and it was day, and it was you know twenty four seven. Um, so he's been a, a very big part of my career. Uh, and then in L.A. Um, and watching him you know, work as now the general manager uh, was was huge for me. And, you know, we actually have not spoken, um, but we've exchanged text messages. And, you know, he just expressed how incredibly happy he was for me. And and, you know, my my response was, you know, just how grateful I was, you know, for him. So it was, uh, it was great. Tim Healy. Hi, Kim. Congratulations, Kim Healy from Newsday here. Hey, Tim. The, the parts of your childhood spent in Queens and I believe Long Island, what role did that have in shaping your softball playing, softball and baseball loving life? Uh, so me playing Stickball in Queens is, um, you know, a very fond memory uh, and running bases, you know, first base would be the red car on the right. Second base was the manhole. Third base was the car, you know, green car on the left and, and another manhole for home. Uh, those were great memories. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up in Queens, there weren't really leagues around at that time. So I wasn't really formally playing. It was just, this was street play. You know, this was just kids enjoying the game. And that's what we had. And if there weren't enough for us to play, uh, you know, a full, full on team, you know, team game, we just played, um, you know, we just had a catch in the street. Uh, so it was, you know, those, those times were just so much fun for me. Uh, moving to Long Island is when I actually got to play in a, in a formal league, and that was probably when I was about 12 years old. Uh, and you know, when you think about it, you know, going on to play college softball when you really hadn't played in the league until you were 12, that's unheard of these days. You know, but back then, you, know, you were just outside every day playing. Um, and so those were really formative years and great memories. Where in Long Island did you live? Glen Cove. Thank you. Hi, this is uh, Craig Benervini from Fox Sports Florida. Congratulations, Kim. Thanks, Craig. This is amazing and inspirational, not only to women. I think anybody watching this, uh, it's quite emotional watching it. Is it is it for you as well? And also, uh, where did your fearlessness come from? Oh, boy. Um, so this has been... Uh, Again, this has been a tremendous 72 hours. In terms of my fearlessness, uh, I don't know where it comes from, um, but I can tell you I, you know, I can remember it probably from when I was in high school forward. Uh, and, you know, I was not the kid that was always going to follow with the rest of the group. That was not me. I was going to do my own thing. And I didn't care what people said. I was just going to do it. Um, and that has followed me throughout high school, college, my professional career. Um, 
you know, it, it's just not, it's just knowing what you want to do and doing it and not worrying about what anybody else says. So that has carried me through. Um, it has given me uh, a strength that, you know, I'm not sure a lot of other people have it to, you know, to, to, to go through what, you know, I have publicly just in terms of um, not having gotten the job so many times, but, you know, it pays off, I'll tell you that much. Al Butler. Oh, sorry. Hi, Kim. Congratulations, Sal Butler from UPI. Hi, Al. Hi. Um, I know you mentioned some figures in the past that have inspired you and people that you've looked up to, but obviously you've never seen anyone in, in Major League Baseball take on the challenge that you're about to take on. Um, I was curious, have you, have you uh, maintained a, and, and paid attention to other leagues like I see in the NFL and NBA? We've had coaches and officials and an owner, uh, for instance, that um, women have, have achieved uh, first achievements for those sports. I was curious, have, have any of those recent accomplishments, have they inspired you as a plate that, um, that enables you to keep that persistence um, within Major League Baseball that you were going to get this job? Absolutely. I think, you know, any of the women that are, you know, out on the, out on the court, out on the field, um, you know, in the coaches' locker rooms, you know, those are the women who are really, really in the trenches and who have gain so much respect from the players. So, you know, from my position, um, you know, I, I can be in those positions, but I don't have to do that every single day. Uh, it's, it, again, it's the, the ones who are down there doing it every single day. My admiration for them is immense. And that is inspiring you know, from the football coaches to the basketball coaches. Um, they've, they've done tremendous. Thank you, Gabe. Oh, hi, Kim. Uh, Gabe Lax with you today. Uh, you mentioned wanting to uh, leverage the diversity within the Marlins uh, organization that you've seen. Well, uh, what are the upsides of, of diversity and, and having a, a variance of, of voices in the room? How, how have you seen that, that boost organizations in your past experience? You know, I've seen, I've been in rooms where you know, say, it, for example, it's been just players and the players have, you know, former players and they have a unique perspective for sure. Um, and they can tell you a lot about guy's character and, um, you know, how they approach, how they approach their craft every single day. But I think sometimes you get, you know, too zoomed in and you don't necessarily see the, the entire picture. Um, it, and I'm talking about this one specific uh, example. Uh, and so, again, I think that's why you need different perspectives in the room. Um, you need someone from the front office. You need someone from the scouting department, um, from player development, from analytics. You need all these people in the room to make good decisions. We all bring certain strengths and expertise to the table. And I think if you don't use those resources, shame on you. Shame on you. You know, in order to make good decisions, you need all the information you can. So, you know, that, that's what I hope to try and um, build upon here. Tim Brown. Hey, Kim Ng. Hi, Tim Brown. Um, you talked earlier about the Billie Jean King and Martina Navratilova, how they inspired you. I wondered, in your role over the last decade or so, traveling to... Trailblazers series, Urban Academies, uh, Baseball for All stuff. Uh, looking into the eyes of eight-year-old girls and 10-year-old girls and 12-year-old girls, how did they inspire you day to day? They inspired me day to day because they just don't see limits. They don't. They're, they're too young. They're too naive. Um, the world is their oyster. And I marvel at many of the, the girl athletes that I see today. They just let it all hang out, out on that field. And, you know, I, 
you know, I would, you know, I, I have marveled at them and wished that I could be as, as carefree as they are. It just doesn't matter. They're just going to go out there a hundred, 150 percent every day. Um, and they're just doing something that they love. That's, that's all that, that they're doing. Uh, so I, they, they are an inspiration to me. They're still playing stickball. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Good luck. You're welcome. Thanks. Josh. Hey, Kim. Congratulations. Hey, this Josh. is uh, Josh Friedman in, w in uh, Chicago with WGN TV. Just thinking back to your early days with the White Sox, you mentioned Dan Evans, but who else had a strong influence? And what lessons did you learn early in your baseball career that have stuck with you? Uh, in Chicago or anywhere? Yeah, primarily with the White Sox. With the White Sox. Um, well, I can tell you Jerry Reinsdorf uh, has had an impact on me in terms of, um, you know, Jerry has been an incredibly loyal owner um, to his staff. And I think that has always stuck with me and amazed me. Um, when the Dodgers and the White Sox uh, joined forces and uh, owned a spring training facility together in Arizona, I saw the same faces from 25 years ago. Uh, he has the same staff. Um, they're incredibly happy. They're incredibly loyal to Jerry. And I think that that has stuck with me. Um, other people at the White Sox, gosh, there was um, Kenny Williams who I worked with. Um, Kenny was a great influence. Yeah, Kenny was one of the guys who took me out scouting early on in my career. Uh, Grace Swit, who is, um, I'm not sure exactly what her title is, but I imagine it's something like Senior Director of um, Player Development, Minor Leagues. Um, she was a great help to me throughout my career. Um, particularly when I was with the White Sox and you don't mess with grace, you don't mess with her. And, and, and you know, and it really showed me if you knew what you were doing, um, you know, you have a voice and you're at the table and you tell people. Um, so that was, that was grace for me. Olivia. Hey Kim, Olivia Garvey, ABC seven DC. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> For many of us women that are in baseball, have loved the game of baseball for years now, have followed you, uh, seen the amount of interviews that you've gone through. First, a girl that really truly does love the game and wants to be a GM in an organization someday, what advice do you give them that you followed throughout your career? You know, the, the one piece of advice I would have is tell people what you think. Um, I don't think that I was ever hired to just nod and play along. You are hired to give your opinion. You're hired for your opinions. And those are, those are things that matter. And again, it's, you know, you can bring all the right people to the table, but if they're not talking, you know, if those diverse perspectives are not talking, you don't really have much of anything. And so I always felt that I needed to express myself. And when I didn't agree, I did it. You know, we all did it with respect. Um, you can have different opinions, uh, but those all have to come out. So that would be my biggest piece of advice is to, you know, you have your opinion, just voice it, voice it. You know, what, what could go wrong? You know, someone disagrees with you. That's it. Alyssa. Hi, Kim. Congratulations. Alyssa Palacelli here with New York One News. Just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about your time in Queens playing stickball, wondering what neighborhood that was in, and then just reflect on your time with the Yankees and how your time here in New York will help you in this new role. So uh, I was in Fresh Meadows. I went to PS 173. It's amazing. I can remember that. But went to PS 173, and um, my time in New York, and I, and I told Derek during one of our conversations, I was glad to have gone to the Yankees first. Uh, you know, having that be my first stop along the way in terms of my assistant general managerships, uh, because I got to see what winning, uh, winning at a high, high level 
for an extended period of time looked like and what that took. And, um, you know, between you know, Mr. Steinbrenner, the staff there, obviously Brian, I get to see the many different facets of the operation and, and what it took from their perspective, you know, and, and the drafts that we, you know, we had and the, you know, the development, um, all, the, all the coaches in the player development system and, you know, the excellence that they demanded. Uh, that all came from the top, obviously, but it permeated down throughout the organization. And, you know, from the time you entered our organization as a recent draftee to the time that you entered the big leagues, um, you know, you were expected to give your all, your all, your 100% each day. And that's what we want to bring here. Brittany? Hi, Kim. Congratulations. Um, I'm Brittany Dell from NBC Alex. Um, my question is, your announcement of your new position comes days after Kamala Harris was um, declared the vice president-elect, um, who also wore barriers as just a woman, a black woman, and a South Asian American woman um, to become vice president. Why do you think we're just now seeing a woman general manager in the MLB? Why do you think it's taken this so long for we finally see this barrier broken in sports? You know, Brittany, I, I don't know, um, but I can tell you that, you know, I'm here now and, you know, just so grateful to Derek and, and Bruce for bringing me on board. Um, you know, again, I've, I've, you know, fought hard for this, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I just know that I'm here now. Okay, we'll grab a few more. Uh, Kelly? Hi, Kim. Congratulations. Kelly Sacco with Fox Sports Florida. I was, wanted to know, how big of an influence has your experience as a college softball player had on your career and your understanding of the athletes you work with? Um, it's, it's had a tremendous uh, effect in, on the way that I view things. Um, I think, you know, being an athlete, being an athlete and knowing what it takes every day and knowing how you have to prepare yourself and what things you're looking for in athletes, I think has had a tremendous uh, influence in terms of the way I look at things. Um, yeah, I also think it's, you know, it's a matter of pressure, um, leadership, uh, work ethic. It's all, it's all wrapped up in there. And, you know, knowing that, you know, in, in just college athletics, I mean, you're with, you're with your teammates um, and the coaches, gosh, so much, especially when you travel. And so you know what that experience is like, and you know what these guys are going through, not to the same level, of course, um, but it's all wrapped up in there. It's all, it's all important. And, you know, the emotions, the emotions that these guys go through, um, you know, the, the defeats that they feel. Again, not to the same level, but, you know, you've been there uh, and been able to feel some of the things that they feel. And I think that helps you to understand them and to pull back when, when you need to, and to, you know, go, go forward, go harder when you need to. Ann Killian. Hi, Kim. Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. I'm, I'm wondering, um, you talked about pursuing, you know, pushing through for the, all those interviews and all the time you were, you were interviewing for this job. Did you feel like you were really a candidate? Sometimes did you feel like you weren't really a candidate, but were only there to fulfill a quota or to project the image of diversity? And I'm wondering, how did you deal with that um, reality that I think a lot of minorities and women face in job processes? Yeah, there were times where I, I felt like the interview wasn't maybe on the up and up. Um, you know, but I will say that just by having my name out there was a source of hope for people. And so you do it because you, you know that you just have to keep your name out there. And it wasn't about me. It wasn't about me. It was about others. It was about, um, you know, other owners who might give uh, interviews to minorities and you know, women. It was about the women behind me. It was about the women starting out in baseball uh, and, start, you know, 
it, across sports, all sports. It was about just letting them know that this was going on. And that, you know, again, your life is very public when this is all going on. I mean, I, you know, my staffs, they didn't even know how to approach me. They, they, was, they, they wouldn't even ask about it because they were just so nervous. They just didn't know how I felt. And so, you know, when your life is out there like that, um, you know, and you're going and you, in, in your head, think you're going to come up empty. It's hard to go through that. But again, it's a lot of this was about others. I mean, it was for me, but a lot of it was about others as well. And, um, you know, hopefully the ones that have watched me go through this and, you know, sort of felt what I was going through as I was going through those other interviews can now, you know, and they are, you know, just so happy for me and happy for women and happy for the sport and what, you know, what has been able to be accomplished. Okay, we have a few more hands raised. Let's go to Daniel Roberts. Great, thanks. Hi, Kim. This is Dan Roberts of the Yahoo Finance. Hey, Dan. So uh, from a business perspective, you know, obviously the priority is winning. You talked about that. But to zoom out a little bit, what are some of your other priorities? What's on your to-do list for the organization, maybe in terms of the culture or in terms of the business? And then while we're speaking, I'd love to get your take on, on a macro sense for Major League Baseball, you know, even pre-pandemic, Attendance was down. What do you think MLB needs to do moving forward? Well, I think from a business perspective, um, I want to be out there more in the community. And, you know, like I mentioned in my opening remarks, I want, I want the Marlins to be seen as a pillar of the community. So I will be out there at different functions, um, you know, to make sure that people understand uh, who we are, where we're going and, um, you know, and, you know, where we want to take this organization in terms of, you know, in terms of the upcoming season. I mean, that's really just going to be, you know, pending COVID and, and vaccines and, and where we end up on that, on that issue. So um, that is yet to be determined, but I think the folks at MLB are, are looking at all the different avenues uh, that we could be heading down in the next six months. Okay, um, Alfrey, if you want to go, and we have Luis on the line to help translate if necessary. Thank you. No, I will do it in English. Thank you. Hello, Kim. Uh, this is Alfred Alvarez from Con Las Bases Llenas. First, congratulations once again. Uh, I just became a father of a little baby girl two weeks ago, and this question is on her behalf. And on behalf of all of those little girls watching you right now who one day can dream to become part of baseball, either playing or in any other position, what is the message that you can send to them? Anything is possible. That's my message to your little girl. Anything is possible. Just work your butt off. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Um, it's great to have people block for you every once in a while. Um, soak up all the information you can. But anything is possible. Thank you very much. Jose Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, congratulations, Kim. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, you talked about the community. This is uh, a city of immigrants. Your parents are immigrants. Um, how do you think that is going to help you connecting with the people in Miami? And also, I was wondering if you have, have been getting anything from people in Thailand. What was the response from them? Thank you. Um, so I have not gotten any, anything from Thailand, but apparently I have a small little fan club in China. Um, so that, that was, uh, that brought a smile to my face for sure. Um, my, my mother, uh, when she was five years old, came to this, this country. Um, she had emigrated from China to Thailand during the war. Uh, and she has grown up, uh, very much a part of this country, but of course has memories, um, you know, from her childhood and has always instilled in us, you know, our culture. Uh, and so and my grandparents as well, you know, I remember them vid vid vividly and their experiences as immigrants. So I can tell you that, you know, from my own personal experiences, as well as you know, working international for the last nine years, um, you know, coming to this country is obviously um, a tremendous undertaking. 
um, there are so many things that you have to learn, so many assimilations that you need to uh, you know, make when you enter this country. Um, that you know, the one thing I would say is that I, I have a great understanding of that because of my, my mother, my parents, and my grandparents, um, and, and you know, many of their siblings. So um, this is a great country, and you know, we will try and do what we can to, to make your lives easier. Yeah, and and you know, when I've talked to a couple of the folks here about our assimilation programs for our athletes, um, tremendous, you know, in terms of the education that we try and help them with, um, in terms of, you know, just basic fundamentals of getting by in life, um, how to open a checking account, you know, how to order in a restaurant. Those are things that we really try and make sure, uh, you know, we provide to the kids when they come over and, be and beforehand. So uh, I am definitely um, uh, sympathetic to to a lot of that. Andy? Hi, Kim. Andy Slater from Fox Sports 640 South Florida. Congratulations and welcome to South Florida. During your interview and when you were hired, what was discussed as far as the baseball decision-making process, personnel moves moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, in terms of the baseball decisions, that's going to be a collaborative process, you know, as I've discussed uh, today. Um, it's going to it's going to require different people from different uh, facets of the organization um, of the baseball operations uh, at the table talking about different players, our players, other organizations' players, um, and really getting a feel for the different attributes. The process personnel moves moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Uh, so, so that's that's really going to be the decision-making process, and then ultimately, look, I mean, it's um, you know, you'll call that all, you call all, through all that information, and eventually come to the decision. That's going to be real quickly. Sorry. Sorry, your your time with the with the league office. Do you feel like that's going to bring something to the Marlins organization and help you out and and the rest of the organization? I do. I think in you know in the central office, you are privy um, to the way different organizations operate, and I think that's that's great information. I think you know in terms of the people that I know at MLB, um, you know you can always reach out to them and you know who to go to. So I think all of that is going to be very helpful for us. Okay, and we're going to wrap up with Maury and then Scott. Go ahead, Maury. Yeah, Kim. Um, you've obviously worked with two organizations that were um, higher on the revenue side and had a little more resources involved. Um, it's, you know, obviously there's some challenges that have been historical with the Marlins organization, and that's going to probably wind up as part of a fiscal restraint around things like payroll and everything else. What on, you know, day one or your early plan that you have initially um, how are you looking at things and, and what can you take from what you had maybe with the Yankees and the Dodgers and then apply it um, in a little bit of a different um, economic model? Right. I think the most important thing in this, this whole thing is to know the prospects that you have, to know your minor league system. Um, you know, throughout my career, at each step of the way, we had young players. We had young core premium players. So, you know, obviously – Derek was part of the core four in New York. Um, in L.A., we had guys like Matt Kemp and Russell Martin. Um, and I think it's important to know who your players are um, and to, to evaluate them objectively uh, and you know, know which ones to keep and, and which ones you can trade. So I think you know, being from a smaller market now, uh, the player development system is just so incredibly important um, as well as your acquisition modes, whether it's you know domestic or international, and you know looking at this looking at this system, it's rated one of the top systems in baseball right now. So you know obviously a good job has been done here, but we're just looking to build on that more and more. And I think that's how you get to the self-sustaining uh, model that that you need um, over an elongated period of time you got to go with a lot of good young players. 
and then fill in where you can. Okay, and we'll go to Scott last. And then uh, just a note when we're done with this question, we're going to have everybody stand and pose and um, so we can grab a photo here for everybody. Uh, hi, Kim. Scott Morgan, Ross, South Florida Tribune. Congratulations. Uh, well deserved. First of all, uh, let's talk a little bit more about your experience with the MLB office. And the second part of that question is how much of an influence has Joe Torre been in your career? I know you were with, with the Yankees, again with the Dodgers, and then you ended up going to MLB. Thank you. Sure. Um, in terms of Joe, Joe's been a great uh, pillar for me uh, in my career. As you mentioned, we've been at three different stops together. Um, you know, Joe has a way of distilling information uh, so that it just becomes so simple. Um, and that's always been the, the, you know, the one thing that I look to, you know, unemotional, objective, and uh, really just keeps his eye on the ball. And so, you know, when things haven't gone quite my way, you know, he's one of the guys, he's a you know, very important guy that I will often call. Um, and then I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question? Yeah, the second part of the question, Kim, was your what you learned again from uh, the MLB office. I know you talked to Andy about it a little bit, right. but you said you were able to get lots of different things from different organizations collectively. Is that correct? And you're able to learn a lot from them? Sure. You learn about how clubs operate in the draft. You learn about how clubs are operating internationally. Um, which is the area that I was focused on. So I think all of that plays into you know, things that, that we will do here, um, the pluses and the minuses of what other clubs have done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and should I take this off? Okay, so that was Kim NG in her first appearance as the Marlins new GM this season. Of course, the Marlins making history with this announcement, and now we actually got to listen to what she had to say. So later later today, we're going to go over uh, what Kim NG was saying uh, during this press conference, all the, the different things that she went over. And thank you very much for joining us here in the Fire Reasons YouTube channel. And uh, we'll be back in the afternoon around 4 p.m. for the another Marlins report with David Fernandez and Christian Chase. So make sure you come back and, and we can chat a little bit about what we think Kim is going to do with the team, especially now that the free agency is up for grabs for the Marlins. So thank you very much for joining us and we'll be back soon here on Five Reasons. See you later.